We were always labeled the international festival, but we now decided really to travel to different countries and uh, uh, not just to um, festival. To do this, we needed help because we felt that otherwise we run too great a risk of misunderstanding or misjudging artists and their work and presenting a distorted picture. So we began collaborating both with a collective called Scene Asia and with Jay Parser of the Live Art Festival in Cape Town. I have to confess that we were completely naive in the way we approached this and left it far too late to discuss the framework, uh, framework conditions. Our partnership with Jay Parser worked very well. He tirelessly fed me with information, but also gave me enough space to do my own research and to meet performers and directors. In the end, we made our selection together. Sadly, however, we had to part company with the two, cur two curators from Scene Asia. Apart from some personal difficulties that arose, we faced a challenge that crops up again and again in international work the issue of how easily productions can be transposed from a different environment. The two, two curators insisted on two performers who were, without any doubt, we never questioned that, outstanding in their home setting. We simply saw no chance, even after long discussions with them, to transplant the work and their context in Munich in a way that our audience would find um, understandable. It was this conflict our concern that the guest would feel rebuffed on an indifferent audience and their disappointment that we did not want to show what they firmly believed to be the best that ultimately ended the partnership. As we were putting the festival together, but above all, all once the festival was up and running, we realized that having a truly international program changed other parameters too. Number one, the audience. The day before yesterday, for example, I went to Live Art Festival and had another look at Albert Koza's performance, and so you can see. Due to all the interaction with the South African audience, which was far more involved, I'm sure that was at least 10 minutes longer than when I watched it in Paris nearly two years ago. Another example is Mamela Nyamsa, who is familiar with European habits and came up with a kind of touring version for the apartheid when she brought it to Spielart in 2017. As she quite rightly assumed that nobody in Germany would dare to get up and dance with her, she brought a colleague along to fire up the audience. Adapting productions to local conditions is one side of the coin. The other side is the question, who exactly is in the audience? In the run-up to the last edition, we became aware of how just wide our audience is and how monolithic. It is largely made up of people studying theater and enthusiasts who, came, who have grown old with the festival. They are a fantastic audience, but by no means typical of the city we work in, where migrants account for 30% of the population. So we added some new colleagues to what used to be an entirely white team, and our task for the next few years will be to reach out to a more diverse audience. And this link to the um, issue of audience, it's, um, it's all about venues. So we, uh, until now, we just presented our work in typical theater spaces, and we realized, because we had a kind of survey uh, last year, that many people are um, kind of scared to enter this um, uh, traditional theater spaces. So, we are, uh, we are thinking a lot now about uh, clubs, um, about um, some, um, yeah, to present performances in flats and, um, and, and yeah, just meet the people where they are and not uh, hope that they will come to our uh, venues. Second, writing text. At the last edition of the festival, we learned from painful experiences that our performers from other countries mind a great deal how we present them. Four years ago, I had a vehement exchange with a Lebanese performer because I referred in the evening program to the civil war in Syria, whereas she insisted on revolution. When you're formulating text about specific productions, you can, of course, always consult the performers concerned. It is harder when you are writing more general or all-embracing text as a graphic design, etc. The question arises, how much influences should our guests have on the work we do? What is essential? 
what is possible, and how do we organize it. Third, informing the public. The German audience, to put this in rather polemical terms, are obsessed with whether they have understood a performance correctly. That's always the first question, that's always the complaint, we did not understand anything, and then they start to explain you everything, and it's my position, or they think it's my position to confirm that they are right. <coughs> this, this topic of understanding, understanding right is, um, yeah, it's stress everybody. There's a huge demand for information, especially about productions from outside Europe. Catering for this is not always easy for a variety of reasons. For one thing, I have repeatedly been told by performers that they regard our audience discussions format with a lot of fairly investigative questions as typically European. An inappropriate response to their work or even offensive. Moreover, there is a huge knowledge gap. Munich, as I said earlier, is a conservative city. There is very little knowledge about the colonial era and associated issues. This means that during these discussions, our performers are expected to provide a lot of basic education. So for instance, last year, I asked two performers, uh, Neo Muyanga and Laila Soliman, to speak about appropriation. And they were totally, they were, you're kidding. So not again, and we are speaking about this topic since years. And it was really, would have been for the first time in Munich to uh, talk about this topic. And I think at the end, so my idea at the moment about this, um, all this panel discussions and artist talk, we need them because our audience is, yeah, it's begging for them. But I would like to develop um, all of these events with artists together because uh, it's, it's important for us that they feel comfortable and that they have, um, that's fun for them as well and that they can guide the discussion in uh, some directions. <coughs> These are experiences we had with the last festival, and we want to turn them into something fruitful. For Spielart 19, I have asked a few colleagues, but above all performers, if they would be interested in working on the edition as co-curators. There are several potential advantages to this for us as a festival organizer. For instance, of course, expertise. It isn't easy sitting on a desk to obtain a picture of the local landscape, and even when I go on a, a research trip, that in itself needs preparing. Besides, again and again, there will be gaps in my education. Songs I don't know, reference to historical events or current politics. So for instance, during Live Art Festival, there were a lot of people who were speaking local languages, and of course there are no subtitles, they need somebody who translated to me. Uh, there were many, of course you realize that somebody's hinting on local politics because the audience starts to laugh, but uh, even if I try to follow the news, often I do not understand it. Um, I do not understand some customs, some habits. So we worked a lot in the South African artists who um, are Zangomas, so traditional healers. And there are some rules which, are, um, which I do not understand. And therefore, it's very um, helpful for me to have somebody um, who can explain things to me and I can um, yeah, help me to, to understand the performance. Second, long-term relationships. Of course, one task of a festival is to introduce new artists. But we are equally interested in establishing longer term relationships and developing together with the artists. <coughs> one idea, for example, would be for a performer to select someone they feel a friendship with or to mentor a young, younger colleague. So we are now working with a uh, Lebanese artist, Tanya Ekuri, and she performed at Spielert several times. And she, uh, she suggested that because she's teaching at Bard College in New York, and there's a um, branch of Bard College in um, East Jerusalem, that we could develop or co-produce um, some um, productions together. So she and me, we are selecting artists from uh, East Jerusalem, and then we try to co-produce them, and we will present them in the frame of um, um, the festival in East Jerusalem and in Munich. To us, this is about sustainability, away from the shopping mentality that festivals are sometimes accused of fostering, not without good reason. And the third one is interrogating the festival concept. The reactions of the performers and colleagues during the last festival gave us food for thought in various directions. I have already mentioned the most important audience, text, public education. In addition, 
I have observed that many companies are changing how they work. One, this, my first observation, uh, Daria told me this uh, over lunch is wrong, but I made the experience in Africa and India. Um, many artists have a local focus and have established theater spaces in their hometowns. I have just talked to a young director in Accra who is devising her own kind of marketplace theater. So that uh, she is going with a group of actors to the local markets and they are performing um, with the local audience there. How can we show productions like this in Europe? Must everything we show be shown in Europe anyway? But aren't formats like these often more interesting than the conventional approach because they are telling something very special? Besides, the self-contained, tourable new production is no longer such a dominant factor. So for instance, during the last Spielart Festival, I went to Delhi to watch a performance uh, of Malika Taninea. And then she told me that she would change at least 80% for the second performance in Zurich. And I watched the performance in Zurich as well, and I liked both performances, and I was totally fine. And then she did um, a third performance in Munich, and I asked her if there are some changes, and she said just minor ones. And then she cut all the text. So, and the performance was 20 minutes uh, longer, uh, shorter. And I just, um, as the performance was totally crowded, I decided not to go and give my ticket to somebody else. And then I was absolutely unable to speak about the performance because both performances I watched before were totally different from the performance uh, she presented at Spielart. And she did it for good reason. So it was a very personal um, performance. She was dealing with the sudden death of her mother. And she realized that um, neither the first nor the second version worked for her. Uh, for her. So therefore, I was absolutely fine um, with her decision to change it for Spielart again. But on the other hand, it makes our job a little bit more complicated because usually I decide uh, either to co-produce a work which comes as a surprise or I um, write a guest performance. And if guest performance, and this was not the uh, only case. So Boise Shekwana, another artist from South Africa, he had to change his performance for good reason. But um, at the end, we decide for the actor, which is totally fine with us, but we don't know that much about um, uh, the performance. Um, and then I realized that many um, companies change the way, uh, way of working. For instance, there are far more work in progresses. Um, I spoke to a South African artist, and I was asking him about his plans. And he told me he has no plans because there are enough people in the world who did not see his last performance, so he's able to um, tour with it the next years, and he would just change it um, over the years. And this is, um, when I started to work, it was all about presenting new work, and there's always this announcement. It's an um, uh, Europäische Erstaufführung, Welturfung, so world premiere, European premiere, and elderly colleagues are still very proud um, of this, that it's something is new. But um, I think nowadays it's more about, um, yeah, that's absolutely, there's no reason to rework a, um, a former performance if the artist feels the need. And, um, and I would always um, support an artist who would like to rework a, a performance and there's no need to, to um, force him to do a new one. So, so these trends away from the product, uh, product towards the process will have consequences for the way festivals operate. We are still discussing, however, at how precisely we want to work with our co-curators. Originally, I took the view that the only honest option would be to appoint a collective of people with equal rights uh, on a man manager level. For example, four colleagues from around the world meeting regularly and designing the whole festival together on this basis. At the same time, I'm responsible for a group of colleagues in Munich, and we need to organize the daily work as smoothly as possible. And I was thinking about so how, how much power can I share um, without, um, the festival, uh, without endangering the festival. Then I talked to a performer friend about the dilemma, and I kept using the phrase sharing power. So he suggested that I replace power with responsibility the question would appear in a completely new light. In the meantime, it turns out that a lot of performers would basically be interested, but that they have their own work to do and their own schedule. 
So we are trying to come up with an individual way of working with each one of them. That's the reason why it takes some time to discuss the different options. So at the moment, I'm in contact uh, with Tanya Elkuri, as I said before, with a very special focus on emerging artists from the Middle East. Um, I'm in contact with one artist to talk about all this uh, panel discourse program. Um, I'm in contact with a co-curator from um, Malaysia, um, uh, some who is suggesting some artists uh, she feels uh, familiar with, and it, we are still working with uh, Jay Parser from Cape Town together. So this is um, the state um, of play with us. Thank you for listening, and I'm yeah very interested in your thoughts and your feedback and criticism. Thank you. I can't imagine that you have been through being able to co-create or co-curate a festival with people from another country who don't understand the audience. So for me, I've curated two different festivals <coughs> and, and knowing what the audience is going to either pitch up to or respond to in yeah. the theatre is, is, I think, so important. So how does that idea, I mean, I think for, for the performers <coughs> it's lovely that there's, there's a greater sense yeah. of understanding where they come from. But for the audience, and it depends also whether you have a ticket buying audience and whether that's a priority for you. Um, I, yeah, I just I, I think it's quite such a strange and brave uh, way of, of looking at curation. So I just wonder what you felt about that. Like, how does Jay sit in Cape Town and and have an understanding of what's going to work in Munich? And the same for your colleague in Malaysia and wherever. Yeah, the one thing is. It, it, this was exactly the reason why we um, had to stop our collaboration with the <coughs> Japanese artist, uh, creator, sorry, because um, they were not interested in the audience at all. So, and, um, um, and for us it was, um, yeah, we, we had to stop it. And of course it was, um, we were in a, <coughs> yeah, it, we decided that we need to stop at this point because we, we discussed it several times for half a year and they did we, we found no um, agreement. And uh, we always, we try to invite uh, our co-curators as often as possible to Munich. Um, and um, uh, to, yeah, we, many of them, so none of them uh, works with us for the first time. For instance, Tanya Kuri, she did a site-specific work, um, I think six years ago, and another work four uh, years ago, she, she knows the city a little bit. And uh, of course, as, um, at the moment, there are many refugees in Munich uh, from Syria, and we are interested in somebody who speaks <coughs> Arabic um, to link us to this part of an audience. So working with co-curators is as well for us a, a possibility to get in contact uh, with some parts of the city. Are there other festivals in the, in, in the, because I'm missing the, the how to position this festival within the Munich cultural scene. So are there, are there other festivals, for instance, more addressing more wider audiences or younger? I mean, like, um, um, yeah, there are mainly there are a lot of theaters in Munich, um, but they are all very traditional. So Munich has until today no performing arts center. So compared to other German cities like Berlin, Hamburg, um, um, and we are the only festival who is uh, presenting international work. Um, there is a dance festival, but this dance festival is very, very traditional. It's more almost ballet-like. Um, so therefore, actually, we are the only ones. Yeah. How do you communicate about certain artists? Do you uh, communicate about the context they create in, the political context? Uh, how do you present? These artists as other artists that people invite or So um, there are some print productions. So we have a, a program book, and then there's a magazine. Um, in the magazine, it's um, we ask some artists to write articles, or we presented um, uh, from visual artists a lot of photos. Um, and these are the more traditional, let's say, means to get in contact with the audience. For the last edition, we did a lot with social media and especially with interviews because there is, um, it sounds very stupid, but for a German audience, the names of most of the South African artists were very, very new. So, and, um, and they had no idea if they 
were talking about a man or a woman. So therefore, we needed um, this um, trailers, and uh, we had a social media team, and they met all the artists. So first, all artists sent a um, trailer from their hometowns to uh, Munich, and they introduced themselves. And they, this trailers were very, very different. And then when they arrived in Munich, um, one uh, person of our um, uh, social media team made uh, the same interview, almost same interview with all of them. So they were just sitting in our festival center and they got some questions. And, um, and these trailers were very helpful because you could see the artists um, and some of them were kind of shy um, and others were uh, very, very active. And they all liked the, tra uh, the trailers they did like. So because I think they were able to present themselves in the way they liked to be presented. It was more difficult to speak about, um, to discuss all these panels. So because, so for instance, many artists asked that we would choose smaller rooms, so they would not like. I thought at the beginning it's great to have a panel in a very big room with 400 people, and most of them um, decided <laughs> that they would um, uh, pre prefer to um, have their panel in the festival center, which was very kind of cozy. And, um, and then many artists, we debated about everything. They did not like the chairs, they did not like the lightning, they did not like to sit uh, in a circle. And I could understand it because um, it is, um, of course, we are used in, in Germany to this kind of discussions. Uh, um, but um, it is, uh, for the next edition, I would think far more about let's say cooking together or eating together. And, uh, and I had the feeling at the end that most of the discussions took part uh, during the parties. So because then people dare to ask questions and you are just two people are waiting for a beer and then you can say, by the way, I liked uh, your performance, but uh, and perhaps this kind of, um, of um, yeah, formats are far more interesting than the traditional lecture, keynote, which are great for us as professionals. So I enjoy this event very much. But um, for, for artists, it might be sometimes very stressful. Although, of course, there were three or four of them. They liked it, and we could not stop them. They talked mm -hmm. for hours. But um, many were very polite and agreed. And later, they told me that for them, it was very stressful. <coughs> Work with residences before? I mean, like, do you have such a program? I would love to do so. The thing is, in Munich, that they promised us a performing arts center since 25 years. So, um, and now they postponed it again, and they promised me that as soon as there's a, um, a performing arts center, that I could do residences there. Mm -hmm. And um, Munich is, on the one hand, a very rich city, which is good for us for the festival because there were never any attempts to um, cut uh, our funding. But on the other hand, it's very, very difficult to rent um, a rehearsal space. It's almost impossible. And for instance, it's very difficult to find venues for uh, site-specific um, performances. So there are a lot of, uh, today I got an email, the artists I like a lot, and they just need a free shop in the middle of the city center. and it's you can forget about it in Munich because the city center is so expensive and there, there is no shop just for two days uh, because if somebody stops renting a flat on Friday, on Saturday, the next person will be there. And this is, of course, because this, uh, I'm, so we, for the last edition, um, we presented some um, productions, for instance, in churches. Um, so there, were, uh, there was a South African performance uh, called Elegy by Gabriel Goliath and it was kind of a morning ritual. And we felt not good about uh, asking people for paying for a ticket. And this was, was a really good uh, opportunity to present it in a church. And um, we had a different kind of audience because people who usually don't go to the <coughs> theater came to the church. And we presented a um, Muslim artist in the gallery at, um, um, in the very city center because there was a huge debate uh, from the right wing party that they did not want. Uh, um, Muslims in this part of the city, and therefore for us it was kind of fun to present this performance exactly in this room. And this was a, uh, for free, of course, as well. And um, uh, there was another performance in um, a shopping mall, so which was interesting as well. Um, and I would like to 
to um, yeah to present more works in different kinds of the city parts of the city. And of course, we are thinking about the ticket uh, policy. So, um, uh, because our tickets are not that, uh, that expensive, actually, you can get a ticket uh, pass for almost nothing. But it is different if you uh, have to buy it before the festival, um, or if you just drop by in the evening. And there's um, another thing we found out: um, theater in Germany was for many years very well organized. So you could buy a so-called abonnement, and then you would always go the first Wednesday um, of a month to the theater. And then there was a lot of discussion that people become more and more individuals, and they do, do not want this kind of organized theater uh, visits. And um, in the frame of the last edition, uh, we had a, it was called a group, we called it Echolot. So we asked 20 people who never before came to Spielart but were interested in our topics, and they attended the whole festival, and they wrote, everybody of them wrote a um, text about it, which was very interesting <laughs> for us. And they said for them it was very interesting uh, to be part of a group, so because you could um, discuss it later. And therefore, we are thinking about um, yeah, kind of more organizing the visit to the festival, so that uh, there's a kind of introduction before the festival, and then, um, yeah, they, that they will go to the festival, a group of, let's say, 15, 20 people, and there's somebody who is in charge and aren't answering the question. Well, I, I have just one question. You mentioned a little bit about artists changing the work in the context yeah. of the audience. I'm very curious to know more about that. As an artist, I never change my work in the context. I almost change all the technical reasons. Yeah. I'm curious that it is, uh, is it the co-curator that gave information to the artist about the <coughs> audience and then that influenced the artist to change his work? Yeah. Or is the artist is aware about where he's going to perform and then he feel forced to change his work? Or is the artistic performance? That's no, it is, so of course. The last question, so we can finish up the Yeah, cool. uh, that's the last question. No, of course, um, it's up to the artist. So um, I, um, many of the artists knew the um, European audience, and they were aware that they, that they made suggestions to change it. Um, and sometimes I warned them a little bit um, and said, so this might lead to misunderstandings. But of course, it's up to them. So I would never uh, force an artist to change uh, something. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>